Absolute best way to start a chaotic cutting board is with, well, a chaotic pile of lumber. So I'm gonna go through this. I'm gonna sort everything into two lengths, longer pieces and shorter pieces. I probably don't want anything less than 24 inches. And from those two piles, I'm gonna glue up two blanks, uh, maybe three, which I'll turn into the chaotic cutting board. Keep in mind with a project like this, you're gonna go through a lot of glue. For me, I always go for Type Bond 3 because it is waterproof and as well, you have a lot more open time than Type Bond 1 or Type Bond 2. I got one of the two boards glued up now and out of clamps. I will have to plane this just to get it down to an even thickness, of course, and get the rest of the glue residue off. And I realized that with what I have here, I don't have enough lumber. <gasps> so I actually bought some wood yesterday and I'm going to incorporate that into this build as well. Still trying to make this as crazy as a pattern as I can get so obviously I'll be able to between the two boards I'm going to make come up with one board which then I'll cut into strips again and then glue it back together just to cut it up maybe once or twice more. I haven't decided yet. So I ended up picking up some nice paduk as well as some oak to add to the mix. So let me run you through the list. This cutting board is going to have paduk, walnut, maple, ash, and sapele. Sapele? Sapele? Anyways. Unlike the wood that I already had on hand that was scrap, I did have to mill this up just to make sure that I would have my four smooth sides and be able to glue up as true of a board as I could. So it's been a while since I've made a cutting board like this, and this one in particular is actually a gift for Hannah over at Lucky 13 Paint Shop. She's someone that I got connected with through Merca and is actually the one who painted the motorcycle gas tank. If you haven't been following along on that build, I've got lots of pictures over on Instagram and a couple of videos on my channel. Now with the second board in clamps, I started cutting my first board into strips. Now these were actually cut on an angle which had an amazing effect that you'll see later on. It also gave me a little bit more length to the overall width of the cutting board. Now with the first board set aside and cut up into strips, I was able to prep out my second board which as well I cut and this time I did not do an angle, I cut them perfectly straight. With the first two boards cut up, I was able to glue everything together into my first blank for the chaotic cutting board. You can really see here just how much the board is starting to take shape, even after just gluing up the two boards. Glue dried, I sanded everything down just so I'd be able to have an even surface to go through the table saw. To get the chaotic pattern started, I used my track saw to cut a slight angle in the board just so the table saw fence had something to ride against that wasn't perfectly square. You probably noticed that that first cut I made with the track saw was on the gnarlier end of the board. I had to cut that off anyways, so it just made sense to take the most amount of material off of that side. So I could have stopped right there. I've cut the board up again, and I think I might cut it up one more time after this glue up, maybe twice. It depends on how chaotic the pattern gets. Uh, I'm really liking just the angle that I put on the first cut, and uh, yeah, we'll see how the next cuts go. You can really see that dramatic effect from that first board that I cut and just the angle that I put on it and how that's flowed into this next section of the board. Pay close attention to the sides of the board as I finish it, because really that's where the board is surprisingly as chaotic as it is. All right, I could be done, but yet again, I'm gonna cut it up. Yep, again, I cut the board up into strips, and this time I went widthwise on the board, just so when I went through the table saw, again, you can actually see from this overhead shot, just the angle that I was getting, just to help make that pattern as chaotic as possible. Now, for all you keeners, I want to see you comment below if you could keep up with how many times I cut and glued this board back together.
Now there's a lot of sanding involved in an end grain cutting board, especially a chaotic one where you're using lots of glue and having to cut it up a lot. So before each time going through the drum sander, I did make sure to take off as much of the glue residue as possible. And that just made putting it through the drum sander a lot faster. Now, if you don't have the luxury of having a drum sander, Macromona has an amazing video on how to flatten a board like this using a router sled. Now, fortunately, because I took my time with this, it was almost dead flat right off the hop. But I do want to point out that I let this board sit for over a week as is out of clamps inside our house just so it could acclimate. And if it was going to banana on me, it would do it before I had already done any of the major sanding. Now my thought was to do this as a two-sided board, so I decided to put recessed handles on each side of the board just so it'd be easier to move around. I measured in, I believe about four inches from each end to figure out the size of my handle. Now, I don't know the exact size of my handle. All I know that it was centered based on the fact that I measured in about four inches on each side. With the cutting board securely standing vertical in my vise, I used a half inch round nose bit from Bits and Bits to add my integrated handles. As I was doing this, I did take my time and I took very small passes just to make sure that I was taking off as little material as possible just to prevent any kickback or just to make sure I wasn't burning the material too much. Now, I probably could have prevented some of the burning if I would have turned the speed down on my router. And of course, I didn't realize that until while well, I was standing here doing the voiceover for this video. Now, miraculously, I only had one knot hole that I had to fix on this whole board, and I just used a bit of CA glue and activator to be able to seal that. With all that finished work done, I was able to start the sanding process, and I just sanded the board up to 120 grit before spraying the entire board down with water and of course letting it dry completely in order to grain pop the board. Now I have said this before, but you are missing out if you're not grain popping before you're sanding through all the grits. On this particular board, I did go up to 320 grit before soaking the board in mineral oil. And here you can really see what I mean about that chaotic pattern even carrying over into the sides of the board. I let this dry for about a day just so the board could suck up as much of the mineral oil as it possibly could before wiping it down and of course applying the beeswax mineral oil mix that I typically use. This board goo, there's lots of recipes for this online. Jcats Moses has an awesome recipe. If you want to check out that video, I'll link that below. But all I'm doing here is using my hand to rub in as much of that beeswax mineral oil as I can, letting it sit for a while and then buffing it out. One thing you never want to do with a cutting board is let it dry out. I strongly suggest at least every six months applying some kind of a beeswax or cutting board oil to the board just to make sure it's sealed properly. And with that, the board was done. I am so happy with the way this turned out. The amazing angles that you're getting off of the sides of the board as well as the top really just brings so much life and is just such a conversation piece in any kitchen. I know Hannah's really happy with this, and I'll tell you, I am so happy with the way the motorcycle gas tank turned out. If you want to check that out, make sure you're following me on Instagram so you can see that. Guys, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, I would super appreciate it. And if you did like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. I've queued up a couple more videos here so you can check out some of the other products I've built. Until the next time, thanks for watching.